I mean, I grew up thinking marriage was the death of people. People I knew that got married, I was just like, they were dead behind the eyes within a few years. And it was like, this is terrible. Why would I ever want to do this? And so how how do you map it now, 20 some years into Somewhat marriage? Somewhat dead behind the eyes. No! <laughs> <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> I can't believe I'm you. I'm kidding. You are listening to The New Man, Beyond the Macho Jerk and the New Age Wimp. Your host is men's coach, Trip Lemire. Is marriage a death sentence for the part of you that's wild? Do you ever wonder what happened to fun, adventure, and spontaneity? And how can we avoid becoming another Homer Simpson or turning our partner into a ball and chain? Today, Allison and I dive into the topic of domestication. We explore how responsibilities and structure are necessary, but do they really need to kill what makes us feel alive and free? This is from George Clooney. It's spelled with a K. K K (laughs) George. K, That's Clooney a G. with a K. George Clooney <laughs> with a K. He designs ball bearings for artificial intelligence. What? Um, that makes no sense. Really? Yeah. I'm sure there's somebody that's out there making ball bearings for George's. Apparently. For artificial intelligence? Yeah, it's how it works. <laughs> it's a big machine. <laughs> how about George Clooney and artificial intelligence? All right, he says, uh, hey, listen, I've had a great life. Hold on, he's just a big fan. Oh, yeah, wait. Let's do the <laughs> Big fan. Let's, don't forget to read the paragraph, that long, first paragraph where he goes on and on about how awesome you are. Long time, long time fan. How, how he, you saved his life when he was 17? Long time fan. I've had lots of women. I've had lots of excitement, lots of freedom. And now I have a family and I'm dying inside. So... <laughs> I, I don't feel comfortable talking about that I'm dying inside. Um, I don't to, know what- To his wife or to just straight to a stranger know. you in an email? I don't know. Uh, but he's wondering, you know, what do I do? Should I leave? So I think I think we're talking about domestication here. Oh, yeah. That big what capital F- D, D-Day. Domestication. What yeah. are we doing here? Good God. Lots of, what happened Holding to the ourselves excitement? captive and hostage. Yeah. Let's talk so, about domestication. So we want to- Or you George wanna, Clooney with a K. You want to you wanna bring it back to George there for a minute? What's, your, what's the question? He wants to know if he should leave. Because he's dying inside? Yes. And he doesn't want to tell his wife. I don't know if he wants to- I, I'm assuming she's going to find out. Maybe it's his husband. Yeah, maybe it is a husband. That would really suck. I think they're going to find out that he leaves, though. I think it's going to come up. It's gonna be You're obvious. gonna find out that he leaves <laughs> Christmas morning. He still hasn't, <laughs> especially since he wrote you that email like Christmas December 2022, mm. and you're just getting to it now. <laughs> um, He's definitely left not true. by now. I'm on top of my emails. Um, you are projecting. <laughs> I'm definitely projecting. <laughs> Let's talk about domestication because this is a big one. This is a big yeah. one. Yeah. Oh boy. You know what I see a lot is that. that we, I'm going to put myself firmly in this group, which is, you know, early on in life, there's a lot of room for excitement and pursuing fun kind of things that quicken the pulse or feel like adventure. If you're lucky, there is. If you're lucky. And then there's that pull. There's that inevitable pull to partner up and to share our lives with people. And then somehow... That also means less adventure or it can it can, especially if you bring children into it. Mm. So the whole thing is of getting older and sharing a home and decorating and yard work and sharing responsibilities, sharing responsibilities and chores and sharing reality, sharing reality of life. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. just watching your energy just tank. Oh my right God. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but it can feel like well, I'm, I did something wrong. I screwed up. Uh-huh. And I only think this seven, eight times a day. <laughs> I mean, no, more like seven, eight times an hour. <laughs> I, I only confront this terrifying reality. <laughs> that, every hour. that and aging. <laughs> Do, can you relate to domestic? Because I think there's a there's a 
belief that mm, this is only a male thing, but I don't think it is. Oh, it's definitely not. No, I absolutely no. It I, it's everyone. It's everyone. I see it in our daughter who, as she grows and gets more, just more, <laughs> what happens when kids, you know, are engaged in the school and then then school loads on more or there's more activities or whatever, then suddenly her entire week is so full of all this shit and and she hasn't had a minute to right. to just figure out what she wants for herself or or there's it's all structured and there's no sort of unstructured time and right. you know she has to do this or she has to do that. So so I see it everywhere. It's with it's for all of us, and no matter your who how you know how you identify or who you are. You know, you bring up a good point, and I'm I'm huge as you know. I've been trying to cram Dr. Peter Gray's work down your throat. Yeah. Um, Remind me of who? Which one? Well, is, he's the guy. Cram? I had him on the show years ago, and he's the guy that um, studies play he studies play and animals mm. and videos. so he, he, oh, he yeah. understands or how we play don't is. have play anymore but it's also like where are we not wild like everything is so yeah. structured yeah, yeah yeah totally so if we grow up in an environment that's really super structured we yes. never allow ourselves to be in the place where we're creative and and, and dealing with an you know uncertain like we miss the aliveness in the adventure part of life because totally. everything's prescribed four There's o'clock no, this is what you're doing yeah yeah. Six o'clock, this is what you're doing. Everything's regimented. Everything's predetermined. It's been governed by an, an older authority. There's never a place of like, geez, what do I want to do? What has mm-hmm. me feel alive? Mm-hmm. And so there's, you're right. If you're, you mentioned earlier, you're lucky if, you know, you, you can tap into this, but a lot of us, we, we never had the, the, the opportunity to tap into like, where is it that I feel alive? Right. Um, some kids are lucky. Like they do feel alive in those structures. That's, I yeah. think they're the, maybe the, 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 the minority that mm-hmm. feel alive in those structures. But mm-hmm. I think for a lot of us, like where our aliveness is, is somewhere outside there. It's up to us to discover that and, and nurture that. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it's, we have some things working against us, not just, not just the norm, n- normative stuff, which is like, we have a job that we always have to go to, or we, yes, of course the trash needs to be taken out or the laundry needs to be done or whatever. It's not, it's, it's, it's not those, but they're like, I am i don't know why I'm all neurobiological today, but um, but the, our brains go into when with structure, our brains like structure because it's like sort of ABC yeah. and then we're complete. We start to finish things, but then, so there's the familiarity, which is comfortable, but then that it's that exact comfort that our brains sometimes seek yeah. that end up burying us because yeah. it's the, the, that doesn't then it eliminates any organic wonder, any awe, any, any new sort of ner- any new expansion of our yeah. territories and our brains and neural nets or anything. So that's why going on vacation, that's why doing something spontaneous or taking a break from whatever you normally do is usually so enlivening because then it gives you, it's literally disrupting the brain's sort of ruts that we get into too. Yeah. Well, I, <clears throat> I talk about this in my book that if we design our lives to just be more comfortable in certain and seek acceptance or validation. We're, we're, we're moving away from adventure and uncertainty in places where yeah. there, there's those opportunities for aliveness because aliveness mm-hmm. lives in that world of, I don't know what's gonna happen and this might go tits up and we don't right. know what's That's gonna right. go. And it could be just little small, tiny things like just trying a new restaurant. Well, sure. We gave it a shot or it could be like, oh my God, this was the best ever, you know, kind of thing. Totally. But we're just like, nope, let's just stick with Ruby Tuesdays. And I'm gonna order the same thing. <laughs> Ruby Tuesday? <laughs> Do you eat at Ruby Tuesdays when I'm not? I own? always feel sad if I if I'm eating at a Ruby Tuesdays. It'll probably right? be at an airport are or you something. Are being judgy right now? To I people am. People that are eating at Ruby Tuesdays, I maybe am. that's their enlivening. They're moment. just like <laughs> it's gonna get buck wild. Maybe it's like George Clooney who makes fucking ball bearings all day. Ruby Tuesdays, Ruby Tuesdays is where is he a gets Friday wild. Friday night date night. He gets wild. It's getting wild right. for him. I, I don't want to judge. Yeah. I am going to judge. But the, <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just saying that if we're doing the same things over and over again, why would we feel aliveness? And if we are designing our lives to avoid any discomfort or uncertainty or the risk of what might others think, 
Why would we feel aliveness? We're just not, you just don't get to have more comfort and more aliveness. They don't work together. Yeah, and I don't even, th- I mean, I totally appreciate what you're, what you're saying. I think you're playing at, at, even at a stronger or, or higher level. I mean, you, you know, we started off talking about just living, just householding. Well, I, that's what I wanted to routine. bring in there is like, I think for a lot of us, we get into the, we don't understand what our North star is. And so if we understand that as we age, we're just going to unconsciously move towards greater comfort, greater certainty, greater stability. I'm not shitting on those things. I like those things. Yes, you do. <laughs> and I recognize if I allow that to eclipse my life, like to become everything in my life, I am guaranteed to be like, what the hell happened to my life? Yeah, I've got everything I want. I can go buy whatever I want and I'm bored off my ass. Like, and and so tell me about the places, like you are somebody that really likes the structure. Just put George on the back I burner for a minute. I wrote that book for me. Like I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna say. So you are somebody that loves structure. You love, you love the sort of that clear clarity, certainty, that you love shit being in order. You love clean surfaces. You love all of that. <laughs> and routine, you are such a creature of routine. You meditate at the same time every day for 20 years, you know, it's like you, you, you know, you, you are somebody that really does well in the inside of these structures. And so, and you also are somebody that really desperately needs to feed your wild man and, and, and wildness and aliveness. And, and yet you have this like loathing of planning, like even just planning your weekend so you can get out or planning a lunch during the week so you can have a break from the, what you always do for lunch or whatever. That's really hard for you. So what do you do? Like what's, what's even going on for you when, are you looking at it in terms of your battle against domestication and rewilding or are you looking at it? To me, like that's just the, that's just lethargy. Like it's just laziness. It's the, there's a discomfort in planning. Oh, this takes effort. I can just go react to something that needs my attention Oh, something but needs it's more fixing. than that because it's uncertainty too. You talked about, you know, if we right. talk, we talk about traveling or something and you're like, oh, the thought of like you and the kid and I'm on my sort of safety protector mode. Well, that's and, a pain. You know. Yes. Traveling with you guys is a, is difficult. But difficult how? Because it's actually not difficult. Well, when it's I travel not. with you guys, I, my prote- I'm in my protector mode. I'm, I'm my, head, my head's on a swivel. Like I'm not kicking my feet up and relaxing. It just, there's just a part of me that's just in protector mode. And, and is not, that a part, that part that's in protector mode, is that, a, would you say that's a domestic, domesticated or domestic part of you that wants certainty, that wants safety certainly. and security? For sure. Yeah, that's total, like, yep. And so how do you my, work with that, essentially the facade of safety, certainty and protection because we're all, everything's groundless all the time. <laughs> so, so like, but how do you work with that? So it's not just. Well, the more um, that we do things as, you know, as B is getting older and more independent, um, you know, the more that we can lean into things. And that that's, that's where the, our world expands is by leaning into risk and uncertainty and being like, oh, I, I'm okay here. I can take a step. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like walking out onto an uh, an icy lake. It's like, well, let's just ease out there a little bit at a time. We're not going to just run out there. Mm-hmm. So let's just ease out step by step. And then that's how our world gets a little, a little bigger is, hey, we did that and that was fun. Mm-hmm. And we made it okay. Or we did that and we were in the emergency room. And we learned from that. Mm-hmm. Like we were in the emergency room three days yes, ago. Three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Learn from that. So, you know, big protector guy here. So, yeah. but that's... You know, but that, that is it. Like there's, it's a, for me, it's a constant vigil of like, I need to stay in that place or I will go to sleep. Like there's a part of me that just wants to go to sleep really bad. Mm. And I know that that that's where my aliveness will die. And I know that's where I will turn it against you and I'll turn it yes. against B and I'll turn it against the work that I'm doing is that I'll somehow make them the bad guy. Yeah. Um, when in actuality, it's my choice to recognize, okay, what would have me feel more alive today? Mm. Well, I think, I think when I underline something is that our friend George was saying, should I leave? So he's turning it into an either or scenario. And you and I are assuming a both and scenario here. 
Um, and I want, I think that's important because, important. because I think a lot of us lack vision for how, well, this means this. I mean, I grew up thinking marriage was the death of people. Like the people I knew that got married, I was just like, they were dead behind the eyes within a few years. And it was like, this is terrible. Why would I ever want to do this? And so how, how, how do you map it now? 20 some years into Somewhat marriage. Somewhat dead behind the eyes. No! <laughs> <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> I can't believe I'm you. kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but I think that, you know, like if, 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 if I'm going to choose this domestic life because I want to, I want to have a partner. I met you and I wanted to be with you mm -hmm. and I wanted to build this life with you and I wanted to have a child with you. Then it, then it goes hand in hand. It's like, I also need to protect this wildness. I also need to nurture this wildness. Mm -hmm. I, it is not my wife's responsibility. It's not my child's responsibility. It's not my job's responsibility to nurture that wildness. And yet it does take that recognition and need and on, to honor those things in partnership. I think, I, it, I, I think back of the, the early, early on, well, a couple occasions early, early on where you had to kind of fight this uh, story that you couldn't bring that into the partnership. You couldn't, you couldn't bring it to me. You couldn't let me know. Yeah. It, you just had to lock it in the basement and handle it quietly on your own. And so I think there is something there too that, that uh, I don't know if it breaks the norms of domestication or just typical sort of roles or whatever. Well, I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to marry you was that you know, at least the first layer of the onion of us getting to know to get, know each other was that I sensed that you were not a person that just wanted to have a, a saw me as somebody who would allow her to have a nice wedding and name her kid Dexter or whatever. You know, it was like you you were somebody who's like, let's live our lives. And we saw eye to eye on how we could help each other become more of who we were. Mm -hmm. Then it was my own shadow and my own stuff right. of, well, if I'm in a relationship I can't bring this part because yes. in other relationships I've been in, it was like, you need to keep that shit under wraps. And that was true. Like the way that I was expressing it was really unskillful. It was usually mm -hmm. after alcohol and all this kind of stuff. So the, the, the wild part of ourselves was very, uh, or the wild part of me was very unskillful. So mm -hmm. there's a skill here. There's a health here. Mm -hmm. And you and I, you had it too. You had your life and, and yeah. I sensed it in you, but there was, there was always just this sense of like, ah, if I were to really bring more of this part of me, it won't be okay. It's going to cause some friction and I don't want friction. I want to protect our, mm -hmm. our happy home kind of a thing. But every, anytime you and I have gone to those places, it's, it'll, it, my world feels bigger. Yeah. And, and I think we've continued to do that over the years. It's been, whether it's activities in the world or it's been in this bedroom or whatever, there's always been this like, Ugh, what do you think about here? Cause this is where I would feel more alive. What about you? Yeah. And you're also, you know, you're also pointing to something, what you said you sensed in the beginning when you met me that had you want to go after me that, you know, this is something that's not, I mean, I'd love to think of myself as a unicorn, but I'm not like that, that, that this is, you're, you're pointing to something that every single person is capable of. And that is having conversations to, of what are they playing for really? What is this good partnership really for? Right. Not for kids, not for the house, not for the picket fence and the car and the job. And the, it's not actually for those things. Sure, that gets to come along for the ride, but what is the partnership really for? And, and that's not unique. As much as I'd love to be a unicorn, <laughs> it's really not unique well, to me. What it, what it points to is, I, that we were two people that were simply willing to sit down and have the conversation, be in the conversation of this bigger yes. What are we a bigger yes to? What are, what are we playing for? In, relationally, what right. are we playing for? For ourselves and for each other. Well, for I think it also just speaks to if I want to have a more enjoyable partner where they're more alive, do I want do I want to be married to a guy that just sits on the couch all weekend and watches football? Or do I want to be married to somebody who has a vibrant life and brings that vibrant energy into the home? Now I might have some attachment shit, which is I like having my husband on the couch because at least I know where he is all, at all times. Right. And he can carry my purse in the mall. 
Yeah, there's those guys out there. Mm -hmm. And the, for them, for the, you know, that that's their pet. They're an accessory. Mm -hmm. Or do I want to be with somebody who is alive and doing things in the world? And they bring that aliveness to me or they bring that aliveness to the home and it's a gift. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, again, there, we've have agreements and there's responsibilities to, to, protect the, the, the domestic life that we have. But I think that there's a, an understanding that both are valuable. It's not either or. Yeah. There's a presupposition here that, that these, there's, pe there's people that actually understand that intimacy, relating, being in relation, like actual relating is enlivening. And so that, 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 that is something that could be nourishing Yeah, rather than the old ball and chain or oh, this bitch, or, you know, like that, yeah. like, oh, I got to come home to this fucking circus and I don't, this isn't me or this isn't what I wanted. Or the women out there that are married to a Homer Simpson, you know, it's just this, right. like the, the kind of the dumb, fat, lazy mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. Totally. Like Checked that out. archetype. Yep. Yeah. Fully. Yeah. Yeah. And so what would you say to old George who wants to leave? Just, just run away basically, which this happens so much where Poor George, he's actually coming to somebody saying, I think I should leave. What do you, what I, but I need a perspective. Whereas most people will just go and have an affair or most right. people will just say, I can't fucking do this. And they'll walk out the door sure. or, you know, I'm gonna go pick up milk and cigarettes and they may never <laughs> come back, <laughs> you know? And, and like that actually does happen because what we're talking about yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. First. So the first is to be in relationship with yourself get with reality. The truth is, is that I do want a family, but I also want to feel more alive. I, I want to feel aliveness. <laughs> I don't want this family. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the truth. There, there, that might be true for some well, people. Well, it definitely, things would have to reconfigure themselves on some pretty tectonic levels for the whole thing to shift. It's yeah, a, but it's the, a whole the splits thing. occur though when we can't be with what's true. Right. And so we deny it to ourselves and then go on a business trip and three drinks in, you're fucking somebody that's mm -hmm. not your wife. So it's the it's coming I think, back. Oh, and I wanna interrupt, I think you can't be with what's true but also don't, won't fight for what's true. Right. So the first part is just to be with what's true within yourself. Maybe you don't admit it to anybody else, but at least what's true for me. And there, I think that what's in to recognize there might be a lot of paradoxes there. Mm -hmm. So I really yeah. love my family. Yes. I really want to be with my yeah. family and right. holy shit, I want to go on an Antarctic expedition and not see them for six months. Yeah. Like, the, the, like, can totally. I hold space totally. for those two truths? And that can be really like, how am I supposed to work with it? Don't worry about working with it just yet. Yeah. Just learn just to be, with, be yeah. with those two parts, those two truths and yeah. learn to befriend them instead yeah. of shame them. And oh my God, if that was true, then it would blow everything up. Just, hey, it gets to be true. It gets to be true that in this moment, that's how I'm feeling. And then the next day, check in. What's true? What's true? And what that does is it, allows that freedom of expression within ourselves so that we're not at war with ourselves because we project that war out onto the yes, world. The right. world won't let me be this place or right. this way. She won't let right. me be this way. When right. in actuality, it's you. You won't let yourself be with what's true. So that's, right. that's the first part is just what's true. And it can feel really dangerous. Like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. if this was true, it's, it would blow everything up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just spend some time being with that. And you might notice that it calms down after a while. The radical ideas or whatever, if you, especially when you understand that those are really just theories to feel more alive. Mm -hmm. In the book, I actually had a client say he wanted to have a harem. He was afraid to get mm -hmm. married because he wanted to have a harem. A harem sounds like a terrible idea to me. <laughs> but when I asked him what he thought a harem would allow him to experience, more aliveness, more wonder, more play, more novelty. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. That's what we can bring now. Mm -hmm to your partner. Mm -hmm. I want to experience more aliveness, more play, more novelty. What about you? Well, and that's actually, you, you just jumped to the, where I want to back up and ask the question of like, once you're, once you can be with what's true for you, it, you know, the, uh, a common default is to then look around you and notice, wow, nobody else notices that this is what's true for me. Like there, there, there. It, it. I know this will probably piss you off, but like the the desire to be have people 
have telepathy and mind read and know you so well that, that, you know, like, but I could go for weeks like this without ever having it brought up if mm-hmm. I don't bring it up. Sure. So what do you, what would you say about that? That, well, that sort of, that autopilot, that domesticated system is so. Well, I think an undercurrent of the domestication is I'm responsible for your happiness and you're responsible for mine. An undercurrent of the domestication. There's is? this kind of un, there's just this kind of weird thing. Like if my partner's not happy, it's my fault. Like happy life, happy wife, happy life. That bullshit. So it's it's like it. My partner is my partner's happiness is my responsibility, and then they're kind of supposed to figure out what's going on for me. And instead of uh, my happiness and my well being is my responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's not theirs to bring up or to make it okay. Mm-hmm. It's my responsibility to bring it up. Mm-hmm. And as is my partner's responsibility to bring up what's going on for them and bring it to the table. Yeah. So if you have somebody like, let's just say George is super unskillful here, doesn't know how to do this at right. all, just took a good five months to figure out his own self-awareness of what's true for him. Now he's actually ready to turn into the system and see about making some changes in the you yeah. know, reconfiguration of like not so much domesticity or even just creating more intimacy through the conversation. What would you advise him? Well, I would say depending on, so the, 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 depending on what he comes up with on his own, or if he's working with me, let's say, and it's like, it, you know, these, these are the ways that I would love to feel more aliveness in my life. I'd love to integrate some of these things. I don't want to blow, most of the guys I talk to don't want to blow up their family, don't want to blow up their marriage. They really don't have a problem with that. It's mm-hmm. just that they're missing these other things. Mm-hmm. And it feels like it they can't happen mm-hmm. because of the family and that kind of stuff. When in actuality, it's a few difficult conversations and, you know, and then we, we can move from there. So depending on what that is, like if it really is like, holy shit, this is going to be a deal breaker then bring in a third party. Like if it's that important and it's bringing, it's having you think about your life outside of these things, then shit, you'd hire a plumber to right. fix your shitter if it's not working. Mm-hmm. So of course, why not bring in a third party to help you guys navigate that? Like a lawyer, like a divorce lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they tend to help. <laughs> Kidding. I but I, I think that that's where, you know, it's just like, just even naming the assumption. I have an assumption that if I bring this up with my partner, the shit's going to hit the fan. Well, and I think that the assumption for many people is right because they're unskillful at how and what they're bringing. Right. And so that, that it actually does create messes. Yeah. And Especially and, if you start the question with you. or And especially if you, right. in the past, you have created splits internally and you've gone and acted out in one way or another. So there's, there's an old hurt or mistrust or whatever. Right. Or there's just a however many years, days, weeks, hours, and months of of actually not doing the thing that right. you're gonna try to do for the first time. Or so, there's that that belief that I mentioned earlier, which is if you're oh I'm not making you happy enough. Why do you need to go do car racing on the weekends? Why can't you just be happy with me and the family? Like if there's that oh, yeah. kind of bullshit, mm-hmm. which yeah. I think is really common. There's this belief yeah. like family. And work should be enough instead of, I actually have my own life. Yeah. And this, this actually, I think if, if, if there's nothing more that we sort of circle back to like the concept of domestication, I think that's part of the myths that people are just totally drinking the Kool-Aid on is that, that once you choose a partner, which everybody, most people do really want partnerships. We're social animals. We're attachment root based animals Mm -hmm. at at the core. We all need and want that as a, as a literally a core need, not necessarily a partnership, but that level of contact. And so, so if we take it, if we assume that if we can only just have that, then all our problems are solved. That's fucked. Right. That's the myth. Yeah. Or the family is enough. The wife is enough. Or the working on your car in the garage on your free time is enough for your undomesticated self. That's a myth. Mm -hmm. And that, and so to, to really that, that is where help can be really great because that, that, that ideally the person, the third party that's helping is able to say, hang on, stop. It's not about that. Right. And I think that's, that's a philosophy you got to just recognize. Like if you believe that, then you will think like, gosh, if I'm unsatisfied, I'm an asshole. 
or nobody can satisfy me. I'm not meant for partnership. Right. I mean, there's plenty of people that think, oh, I'm just not going to ever marry. Yeah, I thought that for a long time. Right. But when in actuality, it's like, oh, I could have a partner and somebody, we support one another and are, are to not be domesticated or to reclaim our wildness or whatever. And yeah. That, I mean, they, but they're like, that's such a, just if you're listening to this, Take a minute and notice if you're somebody that has thought that, that has thought, oh, well, I'll just never be somebody that's partner. I'll just never get married or I'll just never have this or that. Notice the, the, the context, the story, the supposition that you're making when you say that because of what, what you just named, Trip, which is like, I didn't know that we could have that. Right. Right. I didn't know this was possible. Right. And that might be part of, hey, we've been married for X years. What if we we could support one another in this way to have X, Y, Z too? And it's mm -hmm. not on you to, to be Absolutely. responsible for that and to get in those places. And again, but if my partner's terrified of that and lives in that world where, you know, you need to be under the roof all the time, that can be, that could be a deal breaker. But I, I just, I think that's, you know, recognizing the philosophy, recognizing what we're a yes to within ourselves, mm -hmm. and then finding a skillful way to bring that to our partner. Hey, mm -hmm. there's nothing, this isn't about you not being enough. It's just recognizing this was never going to be your job to be the outlet for that. Right. And taking the pressure off of our family mm -hmm. to do those things. Mm -hmm. Um, if I find myself having to manipulate my family to go do things so I can get that aliveness box checked, that's a great indication that I need to go find another outlet. Yeah. It's not my my family's job. If they want to join me, awesome. Right. But you know, if I'm like, oh, either they do it or I don't get this, then that's yeah. That's then there's the, you're going to build up resentment there. Yeah, and I want to make a lot of room for. I love what you're saying because I, I, we, you and I are people that are I think are because we are naturally intimate with each other. Like do, we do, we have a, we have a high bar for our level of connection and intimacy that typically for us, our default of rewilding does actually look like moving away from our system, mm -hmm. our, our little nest a little bit more. But I think for many, many people, it's actually leaning in to the nest. Mm. And so, so that the desire for that excitement, aliveness, the guy that wanted a harem to be able to bring that. And that is a for sure, uncomfortable, tricky conversation loaded with minefields for people. But, but to be able to have like, no, 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 no. I'm not actually talking about having like moving our marriage into an open relationship, but I am talking about needing more and wanting to create and generate more aliveness, excitement, titillation, whatever it is in my connection with you or with you yeah. it, for myself. But I also want you with me because I don't want to do anything without you. I actually do want you with me cool. or I do want you I do want this to happen here. I do want it to be, I do want our home to be one of the places where I get this. And yeah. so I think that there are plenty of, I've certainly worked with enough people to know that there are plenty of people that actually are on that path where they're trying to do it at home with each other. Hmm. And that's a, that can be a really, you know, certainly sloppy and, and, you know, mind filled place, but also a really, really sweet place where, yeah they get to discover themselves with each other. Yeah. And and that that can be a whole game changer. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that this was possible in my relationship with this person. I had no idea they were into kink. I had yeah, no well, idea no, I they were into that, yeah, that's role play. They, I had no idea they were into catching wild bees. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea they were in, you know. <laughs> I don't know what they're We're learning but a lot like, about you. Now. I had no idea they they would like racing if I took them to my racetrack with right. me or whatever. It's like I had no idea they so would. So I think there's an invitation there. It's like you know, it's coming back to what would I like and then confronting that bound that that kind of edge which is like, "Oh, this isn't what we do. It's probably not going to go well." Like we just start to like, "Oh, this is I don't think I want to I want to avoid that." Mm -hmm. And that willingness to make an invitation. "Hey, here's what I see possible. This could be really fun." It might, it would be uncomfortable and weird at first, but would you be willing to try it out in yeah. service of us having more play, more aliveness, more whatever. And that could be in the bedroom or it could be yeah. traveling or whatever. Yeah. But I, I think knowing that I'm on the same page with my partner in terms of values that we both value yeah. having these experiences, even if we may not have them all together mm -hmm. is what would bring us closer together and have us feel more connected versus yeah. 
my partner doesn't think I should want to feel more alive or my partner's not okay with me, you know, wanting to do things outside of the home or whatever. Those are guaranteed places to have us feel like I'm in the wrong freaking partnership. Totally. And I, you know what, when somebody says that to me, I like 90% of me is like, mm, is that really true? Yeah. Or are you just telling that story? Yeah. To avoid the uncomfortable conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what would you tell George here? Are you still telling him to pump the brakes? No, I'd say come back to what, uh, just kind of clarifying what you want, mm -hmm. what feels like, you, and even if you don't think it's possible, really understand what's driving the experiences that you're wanting to have. So it's but the if he's like, or yeah, I want to leave my relationship. I don't think he really wants to leave his relationship. I would have so to suss that, that out. Well, I would have to figure that out. Like really mm -hmm. what's the problem here? Because mm -hmm. in, his, in his question, it was, I'm missing this and that, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So- all right, let's just get clear on what you're wanting and then sit down and figure out, hey, this is what I'm wanting more of in my life. What's possible here? I'd love to invite you into this or mm -hmm. I want to take a guy's trip or I want to do X, Y, and Z. But just learning to get into that conversation and understand what it's about yeah. and not that the partner's deficient, but that he's just wanting more X, Y, Z. Totally. Um, and that might take some, some third-party help there to help them get there and recognize that this is not about safety or abandonment or whatever might be kind of a mind, you know, a mind that's buried in there. But uh, I would, yeah. I would, I would want to encourage him to learn how to speak about that skillfully. Yeah. Right on. Cheers. Go make some more ball bearings, George. If these interviews are helping you, please leave a positive review on whatever podcast app you use so that others can discover the show more easily. Oh.